This next video is going to go over the steps for showing your students how to create a class folder so that they may share their work with you and you alone. In the prior video we showed the teacher how to create a, a folder for distribution. That means the teacher can put all the materials in it and the students have read-only access to it. In order to communicate with an individual student though, you're going to want to have a folder where it's more private and the only people participating are you and the student. Um, the good news is this is a pretty easy process. Um, this is mostly on the student. So all you need to do to have the student create a folder that you're going to be able to use to monitor their work and they're going to use it to hand in their work is to have the students all go to the Google Drive dashboard. They're then going to hit create and they're going to create a folder. Now the only part you need to put some thought into is to come up with a naming convention that is going to help you sort through your folders later. Now if you have four different classes and each class has like 20 or 25 kids in it, that means you're looking at upwards of 100 folders to keep track of. If you do not come up with a naming convention later on when you try to organize things, it's going to be very tricky. Now the easiest way is to start off with your block or period number. So if I am a student and my teacher tells me to start with B1 for block 1 because we're in a first block class, that's going to take all the folders that are created and when I look at them later or the teacher looks at them later, all the block 1's are going to be listed together alphabetically and then any block 2's, block 3's and block 4's and so on. And you'll see that in the third video in this series. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to have the student's last name there. This way, when I look at my block 1 list, I'm going to have all the students' names in alphabetical order, which should be how they show up in my grade book and other places. And the last thing I'm going to do is have them list the subject. So let's just say this is chemistry. So in order for this folder to be named, I have my block, I have my last name, and I have the subject. And when I have the student click create, that folder will then appear over on the left. So if I look, there's B1 Hooksprung Chemistry. Now, for the student, all they have to do now is share it with you. And this is an important step. This folder, they can start putting stuff into it, but unless it's shared with you, you do not have access to it. So by clicking the drop down, they will click share and share again. And what they need to do is add your teacher's name. So I'm going to pretend my personal email address is my teacher's name. So they start typing in my name and they can find it. Now the students will be able to find your name if they just start typing in your last name or your first name it will pop up they need to select it. Make sure that they have selected the can edit function and what that's going to do is going to allow you to add things to their work like leave comments or make changes or things that you're going to work together on. Now one thing I would also do is this little box that says notify people via email instruct the students to uncheck that Otherwise, you're going to get an email from every student who's created a folder. So if you're creating 50 folders that day, you're going to get 50 emails if that is not unchecked. I'm going to click Share and Save, and it warns me about, do you sure you want to skip the sending the invitations? Tell the kids to click OK. And now you have a folder that is shared between you and the student. Ultimately, the student has control of this folder, but as long as they've given you editing rights, you're going to be able to open up anything they have there and work on it with them. What's great about this is you've now created an individual folder for the student to hand their work in. Whenever they create an assignment, if they create the assignment in the folder by selecting the folder and then clicking create, the assignment is already handed in. So if I create a document, it's warning me that this folder is shared, so this document is going to be shared, and I can name this as, you know, this might be quiz review one, I click OK. This is from the student perspective. They've created this file. As a teacher, you now have access to it because it is in that folder. So this is an easy way to collect work. Um, some people are a little bit reluctant to use Google Docs, but they've been using the server and uh, the different um, folders on the server to save work and distribute work and have students hand stuff in. This is a much simpler solution. There are fewer steps and the accessibility is by far superior to the server system. Um, students and teachers will be able to access their folders and work wherever they have internet access including smartphones using the Google Drive app. But this has been how you create student folders to have students share work with teachers.